Everybody, welcome to Monday of the last week of Ordinary Time. Uh, um, this week, uh, next week, we begin the, the great season of Advent, a whole new liturgical year. But let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today's the feast of the presentation of Mary in the temple when she's a little child. A lot of different re- legends about all of this, but basically it, it's her being presented in the temple, her being consecrated for the mission that she took on her life. So we pray uh, uh, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary that we might uh, experience God's grace the same way she did. Let's ask her now. Let's ask her to intercede for us. Let's ask Jesus for his mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Your word made flesh, splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, grant we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard the sound of heaven like the sound of rushing water or a loud peal of thunder. The sound was like that of harps playing, harpists playing their heart. The sound I heard was that like that of harps, harpists. The sound I heard was that like of harpists playing their harps. They were singing in what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne of the before the four creatures and before the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the hundred and forty four thousand who were ransomed from the earth. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of the human race for God and the Lamb. On their lips, no deceit has been found, and they are unblemished. The word of the Lord. who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. stand in his holy place. He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, 
who desires not what is vain. receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their money into the treasury. He noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. For those others had made an offering from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has offered her very livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So here we are, and we're in Jesus' Jerusalem ministry once again. And uh, uh, it's very different from the other ones. And you and I have all heard sermons or talks that uh, um, talk about the incredible generosity of this poor widow who offers her very livelihood. But really, is Jesus praising someone for doing something that's going to ap absolutely leave them destitute. And I ask you, and we'll ponder this, is there a more dominant theme in all of this than that? And even is that even what Jesus meant when he was offering these thoughts in the gospel here today? So again, context will help us. The gospel right before this, Jesus says, be on your guard against the scribes who like to go around in long robes and love greetings in marketplaces. They devour the houses of widows, and as a pretext, they recite long prayers. Then comes our gospel today. I think these two are really tied together. Jesus isn't proposing a program for giving here. What Jesus is doing, he's lamenting the fact that this woman has given beyond her means, he's lamenting that there is a system in place that would actually ask her to somehow give so much beyond her means. I think that's what's going on here today. And so he pities her. He pities her because the religious authorities, people like me, have manipulated her into thinking and acting just as she did. Jesus is condemning a value system of the scribes that would actually propose that she do such a thing. And you and I should find this gospel upsetting. I, most especially, should find this gospel upsetting. The widow is a victim of a corrupt system that's demanding her to give beyond her means. And where we see such value systems that devalue people in this way, this should upset us in a certain way. And if the church is doing these things, and, and folks, I, I think the church has in the past, on these things, we should be upset about such a thing. So as a baptized, you and I have this prophetic role to be able, I mean, look at our own plank in our own eye first, but to point out injustice wherever we see it. Now, um, 
Roheiser in his book, The Holy Longing, in his chapter on the church, he talks about this. And right before the part I want to share with you, he talks about the gospel where Jesus and Peter are walking along the beach, and uh, he keeps asking, Peter, do you love me? Then at the end of that, he says that uh, the day is going to come when someone else will put a rope around you and take you where you would rather not go. He's talking about that sometimes discipleship kind of calls us to do things that are hard in our lives. So he goes on to say this. Just as has been described, in essence, Peter's baptism, this is Peter's baptism, and the dynamic of any real baptism at the church. Baptism consecrates us, and it, it, baptism consecrates us, and consecration is a conscriptive rope, as he puts it, that takes us where we'd rather not go, namely, into that suffering that produces maturity. And he is going on to say that for you and I, to point out injustice where we see it, like Jesus does in the gospel today, is part of that suffering that produces maturity. Jesus did make himself popular by the religious authorities by doing what he did today. So you and I, as the baptized, need to be like Jesus and uh, face injustice wherever we see it. Stand up where you see people like the widow being devalued and being manipulated. A hard gospel, if we're to be like Jesus, we need to more and more act like him, as challenging and as difficult as, the, that, that, as that is. That kind of suffering produces a kind of maturity in our lives. So here's my question for today for all of you. Where do you see people being devalued and manipulated in our society? I God bless you, folks. Very challenging gospel for us today. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, um, maybe we can ponder this as I see you. You can ask me questions about the gospel today because it might be different from what you have heard before about this particular gospel. But God bless you. Thanks for joining us. I'm looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Goodbye now.